story of Kevin Graham. Well, <sighs> cons and other job hacks. Well, I tell you what, it comes down like this. I ran over there at the Martin out of the Walmart, D.C. in New Albany, Mississippi. Well, uh, man, everything was going okay. You know, they was controlling the hell out of my money, though, with the whole $1,000 a week shuffle and shit like that, you know. Uh, still managed to make some money, but I already knew that uh, there's no reason why I shouldn't be doing anything except for coming up. Unless there's uh, some serious, unless it's, I just can't get up and go to work. Next thing you know, I'm feeling so goddamn sick at times, I don't know if I can get up and go to work or, or not. And when I go to work, I'd get down to those stops like going down to Jackson and Byram, you know, all that Byram stores and Flowood and all that. And I end up having to spend the night there. I'm so goddamn tired when I get down there. It's like, shit, I need a rest while I come back. You know, that's, that goes into some other shit. You know, with the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And sometimes the folks know the only way they can get you down is for you to be ill. Next thing you know, you're getting ill. There's something going on with that. You know what I mean? Anyway, it goes down where I see one of my old friends. Uh, I would call him a good a friend, associate, rather, you know. Um, see him at the Walmart one day, you know, like, hey, man. I talked to uh, I talked to Albert a while back. He told me he'd been driving truck, and I'm like, man, I don't know what he's doing right now. But if he wants a job, you tell him to call me. I mean, next thing the dude already told me he was a preacher. You know, I'm thinking I'm giving. A, I, I'm like, dude, he's a preacher. I'll be giving this dude a blessing, man, and he'd be helping me out at the same time. Well, I guess by the time I contacted them, somebody, else, once they found out who I was going to have working for me, the next task is to contact them and get them on code with the bullshit. Oh, boy. Well, I told him, I, I talked to him, I gave him my driver ID code and everything, told him, say, man, if you want this job, man, you just got to go to the, you got to go to the company orientation, just like I did up there when I was running for uh, Tracy Palmer out there at uh, Bridge Terminal before they was bought out by XPO. Well, everything seemed like it was going all right. It's like, man, uh... I was like, man, let me know. They said, you know, the orientation usually pay like $150, you know what I'm saying? I paid, uh, they told me I got to pay for that, but they take care of everything else. So, you know, I'm thinking everything's all good, you know what I'm saying? I know they want to stop my shit, but, I mean, how you going to stop it? Well, you make him a deal, is what you do. I'm telling you, ever since then, this boy has been going up, and I've been going down. Now, check this out. He gets in the truck with me. Well, oh, yeah, this is after I already paid him. I gave him 150 for the orientation. He called me on the last day of orientation. He said they, they said it, it was a little extra, time, extra pay ought to be in there because the orientation lasted an extra day. I said, okay. And I said, damn, man, all right then, no problem. I don't want them to feel like I'm just not going to be willing to pay this dude and all that. I felt like that was probably the rumor out there. So I told him, I gave him the $150 for the orientation. And then when he said that about the extra day, I said, you know what, buddy? You had to drive all the way up there from Tupelo, so I'll give you $50 for that. And I'll give you $50 for the extra day of orientation. Matter of fact, one day when I was in Tupelo, Getting my window put in over there at the International uh, Summit Truck Group up there. I uh, called him to see what he was doing. Told him what I was doing. I'm getting this window put in my truck. And so uh, I'm getting the window put in my truck. Let's have dinner. You know, the type of thing you want someone to do with you. Take you out to dinner. Show you it's going to be gravy, man. We're going to have a good time. I'm going to make sure paying you is my number one priority. Give me $100, because man. I know that's the only reason why you drive my truck for me. I'm talking, man, I used to work for a dude, and we would split 
actually, I saw the checks from um, the guy I drove for not too long ago. I mean, I, I'd be getting, apparently, I was getting $900 every now, you know, a lot. You know, I got mostly, while everything was going regular, we split about $1,800, you know. We split about 1800 I get 900 and he get the other 9 or whatever. We went on about our business. Then when uh, Chinese New Year started coming around, the checks, you could see, I could see all the checks down there, where the checks started going down to like five, you know, we split in a $1,000, $1,100, shit like that. So that wasn't too good. But out there at that damn Walmart, D.C., out of New Albany, Mississippi, man, I already know we'd be splitting $2,400 on a regular. You, you telling me? And then I'm like, dude, whatever that check say, after they done took the fuel and everything else out of it, you're going to get half of that. And some people say I robbed myself, but hell, eventually, at first, I'm knowing I'm going to ride with this dude. Off. As long as I feel like riding money. with this dude. I'm making him a deal like, dude, you, as long as we're riding together, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get paid. I'm like, if it takes us a fucking month riding around together till I feel comfortable enough to let you just take over by yourself and drive these trips, I'm going to be right. I'm damn sure going to be right. And so, uh, and then after a month, after I done, we done road trips together for a month, if all of a sudden you come talking about something happened to my truck, I don't know you full of shit. So, you know, we rode the first day. And how about this? We going down our first damn trip. We had three stop runs, a couple of the toughest stores, uh, you know, I would say, hey, because around layaway time, Walmart put all kind of damn containers and shit out back. They make it where you had to thread the needle and everything else to get up in these stores. Well, I, I drive all the stops that night because we had to go to Canton. Then we had to go to Ridgeland, Walmart over there. Then we had to go to Richland. That's three of the stores where if you ain't careful, you will fuck up some shit. So uh, I run all the stores. You know, he just sitting there riding. And I'm like, man, guess what? You done got paid today. He ain't did nothing but riding. I'm training you right now. Meanwhile, on the way down to the first damn stop, this nigga in there asking me shit like, oh, hey, man, won't you sell me your truck? Say you my truck. What kind of disrespectful shit is that? I'm giving this dude a job. He claims to be a preacher, and the job I'm giving you is a blessing. I done already paid him $300. And that was just for the, the orientation, and uh, I advanced him $100, you know, just to let him know everything's good, man. You know, I got to put this window in my truck, you know, just let him know. We about to get rolling out here. I already done paid him 300 just to let him know, hey, man, the money ain't going to be no problem. And it wasn't going to be, because I, I believe in keeping it square. If I tell you I'm going to do something, goddammit, I'm going to do it. Well, they must have made him the goddamn deal out of the world up there at the orientation, because by the time he gets out the orientation, he, he apparently is already a company driver. But he still gets in my truck and drives it and tries to sabotage it, which I've already said before is criminal sabotage. You want to know how I know he was already a company driver? Well, we over there at the D.C. out here, and I'm getting ready to show this dude like a trainer would. Hey, man, this is the fuel card right here, and we all get our fuel right here at the Walmart before we leave on these trips. We get us a, we're going to get us about 80 good gallons, and we're going to run that trip. If we're going to Jackson, we're going to run that trip, and we're going to turn around and come back. And then the next day, you do the same thing. Oh, how about this dude showing me he already got a, I already got one, man. I got a fuel card. I know how all that works. Oh, you do, do you? Boy, I wouldn't want you having no fuel card for my truck. You know, you might be out there selling fuel or getting too much fuel. Because my international, I hold like 100, 185 gallons in that thing. And I only want to get enough to run the trips like every other owner operator out there. I only want to get enough to run that individual trip. And then the next day we do it again. I don't want you out there selling fuel or none of that shit. I didn't have a fuel card for the dude I drove for. 
understandably so. You don't you don't want me out there selling fuel. Like if I would do anything like that, I wouldn't do no shit like that. I ain't trying to go to jail. I just want a job. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he's showing me that. That's the first red flag right there. And we riding down the road, going to the first stop. And man, what not you send me your truck, man? I can. I can pay you like two hundred dollars a week or something like that. I'm like, nigga, I got the fucking truck. Why in the fuck would I say you my truck? I got the truck. That's the reason why. Only reason why I'm able to offer you a job. He's still preaching. I'm selling you something. I'm giving you a job. I mean, at that point, you're supposed to be pulling over and, and telling this dude, man, look. Apparently, this ain't finna work out. You know, I mean, hindsight 2020, like I said before. But we keep on going. He just doing all kind of disrespectful ass shit, you know. When we get down to the store in Canton there, he whips out this big fake ass diamond ring. I'm like, boy, one thing, he's just making fun of me. I'm like, man, what the hell wrong with you? You want, you going to be standing behind stores at the Walmart in the middle of the night and shit. You don't want nobody to see no fake ass ring on your hand. See, me, I had my J.B. Hunt mm-hmm. ring that I would wear around. You know, and when the sun hit it just right, it might not be that many <laughs> carrots in there. But the dude up there, the, so you could see Michael Finney, uh, whatever, they told me that was real. You know, it was like a very low low caliber or whatever. But still, when the sun hit it just right, it shined like a mug. And there's a lot of people jealous of it, you know. So he gets out, he showed me he got this big fake ass diamond around. I'm like, boy, you trying to get your throat cut by somebody out here trying to think that shit's real. But anyway, he's just making fun of me. We do that store. We go on down to the next one. We go on down to the next one. We finish the trip for the night. He's acting like he know everything the whole damn time. Like he's somehow my boss or something. I'm trying to train him. See, that dude is a big shit talker. So I know they done talked enough shit about me, boy, to where it wasn't even fun to talk shit about me no more. Meanwhile, he done told me to come to the office uh, or told me that while he was at orientation that that was like five pages sharing need me to sign down there at the Walmart before he could drive my truck. And I'm like, no problem, dude. I'm on it. If that's the only thing, I'll be right down there in a minute. I guess they cooked us on Went down there, and filled the paperwork, papers out and shit. It looked like it was going to be legit. But yeah, apparently they done snuck some there. other shit in there. I don't know. Maybe they act like that dude was the one who owned my goddamn truck. Because in the end, I'm sitting here with none of my fucking shit. And somebody been draining money. That's a goddamn shame. I'm like, what else do I have to show you? These people decide to get together and all work me out my shit. Something that should be paying me for a long time. I got a truck I done broke my back on, pay it off. From sixty-seven thousand dollars, that's not including another goddamn probably thirty thousand dollars worth of repair work and all kind of other shit that I had in there. And they even got my fucking pickup truck, dude. These people done got me out about a hundred and forty thousand dollars. And it's not as simple as just giving me back the truck and the keys, neither. You owe me justice. You owe me a whole lot of goddamn money. You understand? A whole lot of money, and some people need to go to jail. They robbed me in broad daylight. Through my job. The night we finished the first run, the dude, uh, he was talking to somebody on the phone. He had, like he was talking to his wife. He probably was talking to Sharon. She sees the old shady ass woman. You know, probably talking to Sharon or somebody else. Hey, he still ain't let me drive today yet. And I'm like, what the hell is your problem, boy? You still gonna get the, you still gonna be making money no matter what. So I decided we done got the truck all emptied out and everything, trailer all emptied out. I'm like, well, he is my driver. I'm let him drive on up the road. I try to log him into the Qualcomm communication systems in my truck. And when I put his driver code in there, it gave me a passenger rule violation. They act like that ain't nothing, but that dude wasn't uh, my driver. He was a he was a company driver already, but he's in my truck though. Hell, next thing you know, people acting like oh Kevin just gets people to drive his truck for him sometime. You know, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? He's not my driver. 
And then uh, we drive, he drives up the road a little bit. I was so goddamn sickly and shit, man. Like I told you, I've been needing to uh, take extra rest and stuff. So when I did let him drive, I kind of took me a nap. That boy probably had my damn truck doing 80 up the goddamn road, 85, whatever. Trying to tear it the fuck up. Because even after that, I started noticing oil in places and shit that it hadn't been before. And that motherfucker was taking me to town. We get up there around about... Uh, we get up there round about uh, the pilot at Winona area up there, and he's like, oh, man, he started acting like he's getting all sleepy and stuff. And, oh, man, I'm I'm okay, man. And then you look over, and he does a little fake like I'm going to sleep and type of shit. I'm like, oh, man, this dude. All right, pull it over, man. You know Kevin. He's the responsible guy. Pull over. Pull over. I don't want you running us off the goddamn road. I take back over the truck. I try to log myself back into the computer. It gives me a passenger rule violation. They had played me. They had used my job to con me and rob me. And then they even put a dude in my truck to drive my truck and try to sabotage it and tear it up. Do you understand? I'm thinking I'm giving a dude a blessing. Meanwhile, he's setting out the sabotage. Life hack, story Kevin Grant. Well, I guess that you heard it.